let's create this cute little notebook as another design team project for 49 dragonflies using the awesome printables from Barbara's shop. Enjoy! <laughs> Hi there, this is Luisa Heinzel. Welcome to my channel Junk Journal Art. Today I would like to create another design team project for the lovely Barbara from 49 Dragonflies. Hi Barbara! <laughs> so for this project I have chosen several different items from her shop. So um, if you perhaps are new to this and new to digital paper and that stuff, you can get all these things that I have on my desk here in Barbara's shop. So you can get um, digital files. They are all JPEG files that you can download to your computer and then print to the paper that you want so um, that you can use them in your projects and you can print them over and over again. So um, yeah, that you can use them for a lifetime or <laughs> as uh, often as you want. So, um, and that's a really cool thing, of course. Um, first of all, I would like to show you um, which papers I have chosen for today's project. So the first thing that I have chosen is this here. So um, this is called two and a half inch grungy circles. And look at this colors. I'm I'm so in love with this colors, I can't tell you. So these are printed to an A4 sheet of paper. So um, they are, yeah, relatively big. But for this project um, that I have in my mind, um, it's really, really cool um, that they are such big. But of course, if you need them in a smaller size, you could also um, take this piece of paper and um, print it half size, for example, or even smaller um, when you tell your printer um, to put two or four pages per sheet when you print it. So yeah, then they will be smaller. I hope that makes sense. Um, the second thing that I have chosen is this here. This is called Grungy Vintage Tabs. And this is normally meant to use on the edge of a uh, page. So if you want to have um, yeah, some kind of a mark on your um, journal page, you can cut this out, fold it in half, and then you have this little tab on the um, side of the on the edge of the page. Sorry. <laughs> I'm always so excited when I'm creating something for Barbara that I, uh, every time I, I lose my, yeah, my vocabulary and <laughs> don't know <laughs> the English words for the simplest thing things. Sorry. And this, uh, the third thing that I have chosen is this thing here. So these are some vintage tags and that's also the name of the printable vintage tags. As you can see, there are lots of different designs and patterns and they are also so, so beautiful. And I think uh, the, yeah, these colors here would fit really well together. So you could also use uh, this both uh, both sheets in one journal, for example, and everything would fit together. But this thing here, I think, is um, in the same color family, but it's a little bit more intensive so that hopefully... <laughs> My plan in my head will make sense that I can use these to make some contrast, but in the same color family. And that is something that I have never tried before. And um, until now, this is only in my mind. So what you have seen in the intro of this video is my finished result. So yeah, I recorded this in the opposite direction. And I, until now, I don't know what will happen here, but we will see. And... um. I also have some leftovers from another design design team project that I made for Barbara. So um, these cabinet cards are also coming from her shop. And um, I want to use um, some of these as a focal point. So yeah, hopefully that will work. And for this project, um, so if you want to imitate that, um, of course you can download the um, pages from from Barbara's shop and you also will need um, two yeah let me say 
thicker pieces of paper like this here. Um, you could also use some um, pre-made tags that you have, but um, I would suggest to use something can you hear that? That's a little bit thicker because um, this will be the base for this little project. And um, the main thing about this is that these two pieces that you use have exactly the same size. So I am a lucky girl. I got this things here. I don't know how this is called in English, but uh, yeah, don't care about that. <laughs> I got this in a happy mail the other day and I just thought I would like to use this as my base for this thing here. And um, yeah, so the first thing that I want to do is um, I want to, ugh, sorry, <laughs> my glue stick is out of the way. So, um, it's not a good idea to use a glue stick. I'm, I'm just thinking about the right glue, sorry. Um, so, uh, we will use some uh, gesso and some paint later and perhaps also some water. So, um, because of this, it's not a good idea to take a normal glue stick because these normal glue sticks are not waterproof so um yeah let's uh sorry i'm a little bit conf confused i will take this techie glue here so don't be confused about this um this bottle here this is yeah some kind of techie glue and it's um waterproof so the first thing that i want to do is make a background um for this both pieces here and i would like to try to turn this yeah relatively small tags into a bigger tag or two bigger tags um yeah you will see that in a second sorry <laughs> i can't explain that so um the main point that i want to bring out here is the following um when you print out these things here and you think okay this looks great and i want to use that in my project then perhaps you think okay so let me start to tear this and I'm explaining that what I want to say so that you don't have to wait too long. Um, perhaps you think these are great, but they are too small for my project. I have seen some people uh, in the past who tried to um, resize such a printable and they made it bigger. So of course you can take a computer program and take the digital file and make it bigger. But that is not a good idea to enlarge such a digital file. If you want to make it smaller, that is no problem. But if you want to make it bigger, that would be a really big problem, especially for the quality um, that you will get out when you um, print that out in a bigger size. So please, please, please. <laughs> If you love the designer who created the paper, um, please don't do that. And please don't <laughs> enlarge your printables that you um, have downloaded. So you will have no joy if you um, do that because you will recognize that the quality will be really, really bad if you enlarge such a file. And um, because of this, I want to show you today how you can make a bigger tag out of the small tags um, without making the file bigger, but using this what you have here. Uh, yeah, hopefully that makes sense. And um, I will show you that that will look great in the end. So, <laughs> hopefully. So, um, here in this case, I'm tearing the paper um in different directions so I know <laughs> if Barbara will watch this video she will think oh my gosh what is she doing because Barbara always tells you that you should have to you know <laughs> that's not the right grammar I think um, she recommends that you should tear the paper like this so away from you so that you don't get a white edge when you have teared it here but i would like to um yeah do it in this direction and in this direction because i want to have this white uh frames here that you can see so 
yeah, hopefully you can see the difference, but I want to have it like this for this project. So the first thing that I do is um, to tear all those things here. Barbara, I hope <laughs> you will be not too angry if I do this today, but um, yeah. <laughs> You have to live with it because you asked me <laughs> to join your design team. So you have to live with with the fact that I'm tearing these things here. So, but that's not the only reason why I'm doing that. Because, um, yeah, I, I'm hearing so often that people are afraid to tear digital paper. So, um, yeah, as you perhaps know, I'm a digital designer as well. And um, so often the people come and say, oh, your paper is so lovely, but I can't tear it and I can't do anything with it because it's so beautiful. Yeah, <laughs> and I think there are many, many people who would say this about Barbara's paper as well. But um, we are creating the papers for you and we want you to do with those papers what you want and not what we perhaps thought about it. And I hope that Barbara agrees th with this argument um, and that she <laughs> that she sees this uh, the same like me. So, um, yeah, let's try <coughs> to cover this up. And I'm just thinking um, if this will be enough. But I yeah, let's see. <laughs> I don't know until now. Um, perhaps we should... Uh, print this out a second time, but we will see later. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to uh, make sure that my both backgrounds here, so uh, for this both things here, are similar, of course not the same, but some kind of similar. So I um, tear this thing here and I glue one piece here and the other piece here somewhere to the other uh, <clears throat> surface so that I have the same pattern on both of these uh, things here. And I think that's a great idea because <laughs> it's my idea. No, <laughs> of course, it's. I, I think it's a great idea because, um, sorry, I'm a, I'm a little bit... I'm a little bit strange today because I'm happy about something special that happened in my life. And yeah, I can't tell you, I'm so happy. <laughs> and when I'm happy, I have to make some jokes. And then sometimes my English makes um, no sense. So I think that's often the case that my English makes no sense. But when I'm happy and I'm talking a little bit strange things... <laughs> then it makes no sense at all. Okay, so um, for this thing here, <laughs> I want to uh, leave a frame here around. So as you can see, I have glued this here like this, but not to, totally to the edge. And I also have these things here. So I'm, I don't care about um, if these things are, yeah, not totally uh, glued down because later on I want to sew here a little bit crazy <laughs> so I uh, I'm just trying to don't overthink this because of that I put my glue here on top a really crazy uh, because I don't want to overthink this project um, because I found out that, yeah, too much thinking is not good for the outcome of a background. Uh, please tell me in the comments if you see that the same. I don't know if it's always the fact, but um, yeah, often I made the, ex the experience that um, it's not so good to overthink the things. I will let this dry. 
completely because if you want to sew with your sewing machine you have to make sure that your glue is completely dry otherwise you will ruin your um, needle of your sewing machine so um, I will let that dry and then I will be back okay so here I'm back as you can see this is totally dry and the next thing that I want to do is I would like to sew around this single pieces here um, of this little collage so um, it's really difficult for me to explain how I do that um, so I will do it and then I will show you how it looks and um, yeah what I thought about um, doing it like I will do it in a second so um, I will be back okay so here we go um, I have chosen a really light thread that is in my sewing machine so hopefully um, you can see this but I wanted to have something that's really um, neutral and really in the background um, of this whole thing so uh, of course uh, if you like this contrast you could also use a black thread or what you also could uh, do is to use a thread that's uh, in this uh, color family of this orange and this golden things here but I wanted it um, to have it really neutral so hopefully you can see what I did here so um, I went around here with my sewing machine really really crazy as you uh, hopefully can see but I went only in this direction or in this direction so uh, horizontally or vertically hopefully that's the right word so I did not um, follow the shape of the scraps with my sewing but I just went over them horizontally and vertically <laughs> if that is a word um, to make them all be completely down so where they are uh, where they were not glued I have sewn them down so that they can't come up anymore and um, uh, yeah, but I don't went uh, in this weird shapes here with my sewing machine. So I want to try to get this contrast between three things. I don't know um, if that will work in the end or if that will be recognizable in the end, but I want to tell you what's in my head. So the first thing is this weird shapes of the scraps. So they are, yeah some kind of rectangles but they are not yeah so i think barbara's different definition from uh, of a rectangle is something different than this is <laughs> so i think you know what i mean um so that's the first thing this weird shapes then we have um this straight lines that make some kind of real rectangles and in the end the third thing will be the circles so um, that the eye is not too confused, I went with this straight lines to get um, yeah more control over the background, if that is possible. And the next thing that I want to do is um, I want to take some white gesso. And um, this time I want to take a brayer to apply this. I don't know <laughs> what will happen and I don't know if that will work work sorry but I want to try it to get yeah a really rough and uh, <laughs> interesting background I don't know uh, if that will work perhaps uh, yeah it can happen uh, that I will take my finger my, my finger tool to do that if that will not work with this sprayer but let's see so ooh. <laughs> okay so my plan was to do it like this because when you use a jelly plate and you make some prints on your jelly plate then sometimes you get this interesting effects on your um, paper where you clean your brayer and that was the plan to get something like this here as well and I think it seems to work but I don't want to cover up too much of this beautiful sorry <laughs> tags that Barbara created I want to um, have this patterns in the background 
as well so um, that I don't cover them up too much so I think we can use some of this here on the background uh, on the back side sorry to don't waste the paint I don't know what I want to do with this uh, back side until now but uh, yeah that's not so important uh, but I think um, I don't like this apricot color that comes out a little bit too much for my eyes so I think I will just apply some gesso here in this areas where this apricot from the card comes through but I don't want to use too much gesso but um yeah I want to see this numbers and this uh what was written on the card I want to see that through the gesso and that's also a thing I think Barbara is a really big expert <laughs> in applying gesso so always when she makes such backgrounds and she um, yeah applies her gesso I'm always really really thrilled about how that comes out and I'm wondering <laughs> what she's doing because yeah <laughs> as you can see <laughs> this looks not like hers but yeah <laughs> perhaps that's also a goal to make it different than other people but I think she's a really really big expert in doing that okay so I think that's enough so I will just dry that and then I will show you how that looks okay so here we go this is dry now and I think that looks really 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 cool and I love that all this patterns that Barbara created on her tags come through here that's really awesome I think okay so now <laughs> I have already cut this little girl here um, that comes from Barbara's cabinet cards that I've shown you in the beginning and she had a chair here I have just cut this chair off and um, now I, before before I can do anything I have to decide which of this will be my front side and which will be the back side yeah I think I think we will do it like this so that this is yeah okay 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 sorry <laughs> so the girl should be somewhere here and I want to use the circles for the background so to create a background with this um, numbers here and there's really vibrant uh, colors and I just tried that out um, and I think I would like to cut one of these by hand to um, make it the original size and the other size I will uh, make with my punch here that's a little bit smaller than the circles here So here we go. And as you can see, the pattern of this circles still makes sense, even if I have punched them a little bit smaller um, to get a really round circle. And yeah, I have no problems. I can, I can make it a little bit smaller and it's uh, nice as well, I think. So let's try. Okay, so what about doing it like this? And then so uh, before I started this I thought about using three circles so something like this and one of them is a little bit bigger and I think that's I think that's good because now 
she um, can stand here and for this that will be the background thing so the back side of this whole thing we could make it like this and now I have to take this thing here because my punch made a little bit strange things there with the other thing but that's no problem we have one left here but I need three for the back side so let's just do it like this and now I'm thinking about some contrast that we add here before we add this circles and first of all I thought I want to use this golden paint here and put it through a stencil and make some yeah some patterns that are also here in the background or yeah how can I say that but now I can see that this golden paint would not fit here uh, to Barbara's printable so I decided to do something different and go with a contrast in the other direction so the gold paint if it would be a paint that fits to this golden elements would make a contrast in the yeah how can I say that in this more brighter direction and now I will go with this ink here into the other direction into the darker direction and hopefully that will not turn out as a fail I'm not sure but let's try that I'm just thinking about I'm not sure if I want to put that behind this circuits yes 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 let's do it don't think about it do it and i'm just realizing no that's not the right color it's not the right brown this is this is not the right brown sorry i have to uh take uh Let's take the Distress Oxide Vintage Photo. I think that's more this kind of brown than the Stays on Timber Brown. Because I don't want to look at, let it look too modern and too art journaling page like. Uh, do you know what I mean? I think that's much better. Okay, so... Uh, let's see so this will go here in the end she will go here somewhere here um, so let's put some of these dots here as well Um, so now I will glue this down and now first of all upsala, I will sew around the circles so that I have the stitching here as well okay so from far away like you are <laughs> you probably can't see this really clearly but perhaps now you can see I've sewn around here and I think that that looks really really cute especially when you use a neutral yarn in your sewing machine i really love this i really really love how that came out and uh, yeah <laughs> i'm struggling i'm struggling so the first thing that i want to do is i want to turn this around i think i'm not sure so later on it will be like this 
uh, yeah I think it looks much better when the circles go like this and we have the space here I think that's better uh, yeah you will see that later why I am I'm deciding that now and I'm just thinking about shading this circles <sighs> but I'm not sure I'm not sure if I shall do that or not <sighs> okay so let's try it Okay, so now while this is uh, while this is drying, I will just cut out these little guys here, and then I will be back. Okay, so here I'm back. So I have prepared these little guys here. I will show you later how I will use those. And the next thing that I want to do is. I want to bring this both pieces together uh, together um, in the most easiest way you can imagine. <laughs> so I will just take a piece of fabric. I've chosen this one here. So that's just um, a leftover of another project. And I will just bring it to the right length so I like it when there's a little bit of this fabric peeking out at the top and the bottom and then so let me just think about it <laughs> sorry so later on I want to have it like this and like this so we have to glue it like this okay I will leave a little gap here in between so this is round about round about half of a centimeter i think and now i'm just eyeballing how wide i want to have this thing here so i think it can be really narrow because it it yeah it's only some kind of a i don't know how to call that <laughs> It's an optical thing, of course, but it don't has to be really strong or that stuff. Okay, so when we have this, we can take some glue and put some glue here. like this put this little guy here Ooh. like so Thank you. 
and the other one like this so that it can be closed like this okay so I will just turn this to the other side so that I can see where I glue this here um, so that I have this little space in between of the front and the back thing so while this is drying you can turn it to this uh, side here and as you can see here I have this really wild sewing I like this of course if you don't like that you can cover this up with a piece of paper or yeah with some decorative paper or whatever you like and uh, yeah you could cover that up if you don't want to have that there um, but I like it and I want to have it there <laughs> so okay um, now I will just take some papers here and I'm just thinking about using this eco dyed paper but I think there's green. I don't like the green in combination with the cover. Let's let's just take some neutral paper as I planned. <laughs> Sorry. Sometimes I, I get some ideas while I am recording and that's perhaps not the best thing. Okay, so I'm just eyeballing this and trying to get the right size of this so I am lining this paper up here to the middle of this slot and then I go here yeah a little bit to the inside of this thing and I think the height is perfect so now you could make um, a pocket out of this rest by folding it to the middle so or we could do a fold out as well so perhaps we can do that but I think so for example like this um, now you could fold this here to the inside and this could be your page and later you could fold this out yeah why not <laughs> it was not planned but why not okay so I will take another piece of paper and do it the same way and now I'm just orientating myself here to this first thing So for this one I would like to cut so that you can also see the difference between the one and the other. And now we could decide how many um, papers we would like to put in here. I don't know until now to be honest because I would like to try that out. Um, I only want to make some notes in this little notebook later so I don't want to glue any photos or that stuff so I can um, put as much pages in it like it can hold or yeah how can I say that and the next thing I want to do is so the first thing is I will sew uh, here to get this sewing that I had here around uh, completed again the same on the back side and then I will just open this up like so line it up here to the middle slot and then I will just sew with my sewing machine around uh, from the bottom to the from the bottom to the top here uh, of course you can do this with a pamphlet stitch and um, stitch through this thing here with three holes for example um, and then you will have the binding here on the spine but uh, yeah I want to try something different today and um, so I decided to do it like that so I will be back when I have sewn this <sighs> sometimes I'm asking my brain 
uh, I'm asking myself, <laughs> sorry, I'm asking myself where I have my brain when the camera is recording. So I put this um, under my sewing machine after, um, yeah, holding this together with uh, some, uh, here, paper clips. And then I realized that I still had the zigzag stitching in my machine, in the settings of my machine. Of course, if you want to do that, you have to sew with a straight uh, stitching and not with zigzag stitching. <sighs> and I'm really proud that this line is so <laughs> straight. And I don't know what will happen now when I remove the paper clips and try to close the pages. But yeah, let's see. <laughs> so, but this little notebook notebook is only for myself, so it would be no problem, I think. And yeah, let's see. Oh, okay. So that's not so bad. Okay, okay. So as you can see, I could close the page and the stitching just goes with it. So it's not, yeah, okay. So it's art. <laughs> it's not a fail, it's art. So of course you can see it here, but I think for this notebook, notebook, it's not such a problem. It's okay. I think it's okay. And now I want to add these little guys here. I have one, two, three, four, five. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so I just have to think about where I want them. But I think you could, yeah, you could make it like you want it. Um, I would like to bring them, of course, not, not all to this page, but I want to check out the distance yeah okay so the first i will put here to the first page i think and of course i think there would be different ways to glue this so i like and i think that's the way it, it is uh, that it is meant to glue it i like to glue it like this so that this part here later is shown like this. So I think that's the way that it is meant to use it. But of course you could also, so let me just press this from the other side, sorry. <sighs> like this. I think you could also take this and then you could of course also so glue this together and then glue it like so. That would be also nice. Then you have this round thing here. So of course you could also use the same printable and the same design and glue one like this and one like this to mark different areas in your journal. And of course, you could also use this thing here to show that this is, yeah, this flip out thing. You don't have to um, put them only to the edges of the pages. Whew, okay, so <laughs> um, as you can see, oopsala, as you can see, this is coming uh, off a little bit. No, not off, but you know. Uh, it's... <laughs> oh my gosh, this language. You know what I mean. It makes this crocodile mouth um, by itself. But um, if you would put some heavy books here, 
overnight, that would be no problem. And um, the other morning, this will be totally flat. And I made the experience, even if you um, make it like this and you write in this little journal, then um, it will stay closed when you close it. When you one time put heavy books here, then that would be no problem. Um, otherwise, of course, you could also um, make a little closure around here. But if you use this girl, please don't make the closure here so that you don't cut her head. So that's a personal wish of mine. <laughs> okay, so this is my little project here. I hope you liked it. And um, yeah, please let me know what you think about this. Please go to Barbara's shop and check if you perhaps find something that you want to have for your own stash. Um, and yeah, so <laughs> I hope you like this and perhaps you would like to imitate this. I think we both would be really happy if you would do this. And I hope we will see the next time. And until then, I wish you a really, really happy time. Stay healthy, stay crafty and creative and yeah, make something beautiful for your own or as a gift or whatever. So um, the main thing is to stay creative. I think that's a really, really, really important thing in this times and yeah, in our life. So see you the next time. Bye bye.